So, what do you think? New Sabbath day? Uh, well, you know, my approach to the Sabbath day is you tell me when it is and I'll be there. I don't really have to, you know, I know you say maybe one day you might, but I don't really get into the numbers. I get into doing my part, which is preparation. And so if it's another Sabbath day, I'm good with it. As long as it's, I guess, correct. But what do you think about it? That's more important than what I think about it. Mm, well, I don't know that all of the bugs are worked out. So what you're to saying is that this is a uh, another way opposed to um, there are two ways now. Oh, there's at least two ways. There's been there's been several ways to calculate. It. Some people started from a certain day of the year, like Wednesday, being the first day of every year. Every year begins. Every year begins on a, a Wednesday, and every Sabbath day is on. And, and that Wednesday being the fourth day of the week makes Saturday the Sabbath day. And so their Sabbath day is every Saturday. I guess my question is, if there's two ways of doing it, do both of them come out to be the same day? Or with one way, the Sabbath might be on a Wednesday, and with another way, the Sabbath might be on a Friday. With both ways, do is the Sabbath going to be on a Wednesday? No. So how do you know, how can you have two Sabbaths? How can they be doing two different Sabbaths? That, I don't understand that. You don't understand the two different ways. Well, I listened to the conversation yesterday, but I don't understand how you can have two Sabbaths. No, we're not saying that you have two Sabbaths. No. You mean one on Thursday and another one on Friday? No, that's not what we're saying at all. We're saying that there's a different way to calculate it. Different way that's biblically correct. Now, there's probably a dozen ways that people can make up stuff. But does it align with scripture as of today? Uh, or at, here recently, we are discovering that there's another way of calculating the Sabbath day that lines up with the scripture. Okay. There's many that don't line up with the scripture, mm -hmm. but there's two now that do. Whereas before we only had one up until yesterday or the day before, we only had one way of calculating, one correct way. I said there's many incorrect ways, but we had one way of correctly, or biblically, scripturally calculating the Sabbath day. And as of today, we understand that there are two ways. I don't know that there's a third. I don't believe that there's a third until somebody proves me otherwise, but I am understanding that there are two ways to calculate it, and it does end up on two different days. So how does that work? So either, so if the first one, the first way, the original way that, you know, you found out has calculates the Sabbath being Monday, and this different way or this this other way calculates both being scripture to the Sabbath being Tuesday. I thought you could only have there's only one Sabbath. You said the seventh, right? So both days are the seventh? Well, yeah, it depends on how you do it. That's kind of confusing. Not, that doesn't make any sense to me. All right. Well, let's go over and let's look at these slides that I was putting together for another class. I was working on on the subject. Maybe this will help. In this first slide, which is talking about how the Sabbath days are determined monthly. This was going to be a slide that talks a lot about stuff you already know. Like, for instance, how 
each month starts with the moon. Mm -hmm. Right, every time you have a new moon, you have a new month. They go together. Same same day it starts. Right. And you also understand about the planetary week being absent from existence back when all of this was first talked about talking mm -hmm. about the moon and the months the planetary week wasn't created until the second century bc did they anybody ever start talking about days like monday tuesday wednesday blah 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 those days didn't exist until the days of the maccabean period even after the maccabees all right yeah i understand that mm -hmm. and you also knew that the Sabbath days are on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Right. Do you understand how we get that? No. <laughs> Do I need to? Well, yeah, because this is an original thought. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I never heard anybody else other than myself say that the Sabbath days were on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th day of every lunar month. I have heard absolutely nobody else say that until I read an article and you've seen this in a video. You even see back when I found out about it. This document here was the first time I ever heard anybody else in the world mention that the Sabbath days were on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Yeah, I remember that video. Well, it's not a completely original thought because the idea came in Leviticus chapter 23 that talks about the Sabbath days and when they are. And it, you'll be hard pressed to find another place that tells you when there are Sabbath days in the Bible and they all correspond to the feast days. Mm -hmm. And so you find out, you know, that they are on the... Um, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. Like I said, you already know that. When I do that other video, I'm going to you know, take the time to explain that. But in the second slide, we were going to get into Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 15, where it starts talking about these weeks. And as far as which way of calculating it is correct, this is a test that we have in the scripture to see if your method of calculating the Sabbath day is correct. Mm -hmm. If your method of calculating the Sabbath day is not correct, it won't pass the Leviticus 23 and 15 test is what we're saying. Okay. Well, I don't know. You want to learn what that test is? Let's see. Are you going to use it for the other way? Yeah, I'm planning on explaining all of this. But I think I was answering a question. You asked a question, was it why we have two or something like that? Yeah, the question that I asked was, how can you have two Sabbath days? Isn't the Sabbath on the seventh day? If you have two Sabbath days, that means you have two seventh days? I'm not, I'm not understanding. I'm kind of confused. The problem is, is in the translation. When you go to the Septuagint, you get one answer. And when you go to the Hebrew, you get another answer. So technically, you have three answers when you consider the English. So we read the verses out of the Septuagint. It says, and ye shall number to yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day on which ye shall offer the sheaf of the heave offering seven full weeks. Until the morrow after the last week, ye shall number 50 days and shall bring a new meat offering to the Lord. So this right here, back in the day when I went through the whole Pentecost, you know, lining up with the Sabbath day. This was what actually um, I used to prove that the faith. 15th, 22nd, and 29th day of calculating the Sabbath day was correct. But. The but comes in when you look at the Hebrew and see that it doesn't say four weeks, but it says Shabbat. Seventh. Meaning seventh day? Uh, no. 
Well, there's that W looking figure down there. And you see what sound it makes. Sure. Then you have this figure here, which is kind of like what you see over here. All right? Remember, this is the paleo. So you're getting close to over in this area, but you see it's pointing to the what? Yeah. And you see this uh, circle there pointing to that. But let's look at it in the other one because it's kind of seem a little funky. But it's the one, two, three, four. Fourth word. One, two, three, four. So you got that, the backward C, and then the Y. So there's that one. Mm -hmm. There's the backward C. Mm -hmm. And then that. That's, no, there's the Y right there. Then that's the Y. So it's Shabbat. Shabbat, that's why they get the word Shabbat because it should be mm -hmm. more like Shabbat because it's three syllables. Boy, they're saying that's the Shabbat day, Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So that's different. And the Septuagint, it says four weeks, but in the Hebrew, it says Shabbat, which means that it actually fits the newer way of, not the newer way, but the other way of calculating, it actually works out right. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, looking here at 2023, this is the way the new calendar is starting to look where you actually have three months in here, starting from the first new moon after the spring equinox, which will be about March the 22nd in the year 2023. That'll be the first uh, sighting and that sighting is good for 91 days instead of 30 29.5 days is is good for the whole season mm -hmm. so when you look this column right here would be the sabbath days which would include the 8th the 15th the 22nd and the 29th day of the month now as far as leviticus uh, chapter 23 and verse 15 is concerned it's talking about the Omar count to start the day after the Sabbath day go ahead and read verse 15 and you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Shabbat from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering seven Shabbat shall be complete I like the way he did that so we need, a t need another syllable <laughs> Shabbat yeah. Or so it says the morrow after the Shabbat. The morrow after is when you shall count, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Shabbat. Then it says seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Now, the day after the Shabbat would be the 23rd day of the month. So you would start the Omar count on J23. Day 23 is when you're gonna start this count. And so it says seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So there's one Sabbath down here on the 29th day. So that would be one, two Sabbaths, three Sabbaths, four Sabbaths, five Sabbaths, six Sabbaths, seven Sabbaths complete. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbaths shall ye number 50 days. So that's the day after the morrow. Mm -hmm. 50 days. See, this right here is not day zero. This is day one. This is day zero right here. So you go one all the way down until you get to day 50, which is right here. So that one works. So that's the test. Well, that's the test to see if, if what you're doing is accurate. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how, like I said, I went through this back a number of years ago. You probably remember because it started a big stink then about how the way of calculating the Sabbath day didn't match up, didn't fit, didn't work as far as this was concerned. Now, what I was doing back then was I wasn't counting New Moon Day. And so that's why 
you know, the, the days weren't lining up is because I didn't know how to count the new moon day. I wasn't counting it as a separate day of its own. Mm -hmm. I counted it as the first work day. And that was bringing a confusion. But what ended up having to where I could go back and start using the monthly calculation as I had been used to was I found that way of doing it in the Septuagint. But then here recently, it was brought to my attention that the Hebrew doesn't say four weeks. It says Shabbat. So that brings us right back to that where we was at that all those many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. How does you how do you make it work now? How do you make it work when it says Shabbat and, and you know, that Septuagint is a little bit watered down as far as that's concerned and bringing a lot of confusion. So the solution then is that even though this monthly method does work, you know, you may have to find the Septuagint to, 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 to make it work. The other method, the seasonal method just works without any um it works in the hebrew mm -hmm. my method works in the greek but it doesn't stand up to the hebrew because so of that that's why he was he made the statement that um should we not be doing the hebrew yeah. Instead of the Greek. Yeah. So, and like and, and like I was thinking, you know, that's a change for me because like I said, you know, and that's part of what I'm doing here is letting you know, okay, well, why was I doing it that way in the first place? It's because I was able to go back to this uh to this Septuagint and these seven full weeks. And with that I was able to make the calculation. Make the calculation work. And let me show you how. So you have this would be the first day right here, right? Mm -hmm. So your Sabbath days would be right here. This would be a Sabbath. This would be a Sabbath day. And this would be a Sabbath day. Let's go ahead and let me put some blocks around it. So you're going to start to count on the 23rd. So now you have one Sabbath. Then the new moon day. Then you have two Sabbaths. Three, four, five, six, seven. And then you talk about going the day after, which just puts you way over here. But that ain't when Abraham went through his ordeal. Um, he started on the new moon of the third month and he celebrated on the 14th day of the third month. That's when he actually had the harvest festival. The third month will start right here. This would be the... 8th and this would be the 15th and so he's supposed to be celebrating it over here so it doesn't match it's not after it's not a day after it only matches the Septuagint so the difference would be is that you start off with Wednesday being the Sabbath day and it will stay Wednesday all the way until June. Right. Wanted to switch to Monday. And you look what it does to Hanukkah. People last year was wondering why Hanukkah started at a certain time and all of this. Well, normally we would start the 10th month or the 9th month right there at about November the 25th. So that would have been about day one, the second of December would have been day eight. 15 would have been the ninth. The 16th would have been the 22nd. So then you say 23rd, 24th, 25th day of the month. Well, that's right there at the eve of the, um, Sabbath day, which is right here. So as it turns out, the first day of Hanukkah and the last day of Hanukkah actually fall on the Sabbath day, just like the Feast of Tabernacles.
which is also an eight day celebration. And I think out of all of the evidence that I've seen so far, the fact that the first and the eighth days of Hanukkah will fall on Sabbath days is the most substantial proof that I think I've seen. And then as far as the 13th month is concerned, I'm show you how that works out. I think this is a, a more sophisticated way of doing it. I think the way we're used to it is more accurate. But you see right here where you normally have 13 weeks, mm -hmm. where in this month you have additional weeks, that's because of the day of remembrance. You see that even though there will be a new moon on September the 15th, it falls before the new season has started. And because it starts before the new season has started, then it'll be part of this season here. So we'll have four months in that summer. But as far as the Sabbath days are concerned, they will start off being Monday and it will just stay being Monday. You don't change the Sabbath day until the day of remembrance. That's what makes it so sophisticated is that you change the Sabbath days with the day of remembrance. Okay. Now that in that, everything just clicks, clicking off every seven days. And then you have new moon days in there. The new moon days are to be celebrated. They are to be remembered. They are to be, you know, you still blow the trumpet on the new moon days. So the Sabbath day would only change for uh, four, four times. Is that right? Those in a year. Yeah. Days. Yeah. In a year. So like it would start off as Tuesday and then go to Saturday and then go to Wednesday and then go to Monday and so on. But, all right, well, we'll continue to hammer it out. Hammer it out.